Welcome to the Impact Multiplier CEO podcast. If you're a chief executive or if you think like one and you want to create exponentially greater impact, then this show is for you. My name is Richard Medcalf, founder of X Quadrant. I coach some of the most successful and impressive CEOs and executive teams on the planet and help them achieve even more extraordinary results. Because no matter how successful you've been in the past, there's always a whole new level of impact available to you. So, if you're ready to play a bigger game than ever before, I invite you to join us and become an Impact Multiplier CEO. Well, this is the Mission Driven CEO season, and today we definitely have a CEO with a mission. Mike Layev is the CEO of Zero Eyes. Now, Mike is a former Navy SEAL, and he came back from military service, got involved in civilian work, and then realized that there was a huge issue that he wanted to address where he lives in the USA, namely that of gun violence and uh, the security of schools and other public spaces. He realized that there's an opportunity to create artificial intelligence technology to review video camera footage live and immediately alert first responders when a gun was was produced, when a gun was in sight, and therefore be able to get people to any um, potential shootings much faster and save lives. So Mike's on a mission to save lives. He explains how that, that mission grew up, how he identified the need and why he decided to do something about it. We look at how he's grown the company over the last five years, despite COVID really hitting some of his key customer bases. And we look, talk about the strategy for hiring that he's used to be able to really piggyback on an existing high performance culture and how he's really repurposed some of his experience from the military into his leadership style. So I found this was an inspiring and exciting conversation. Mike's a man with a mission, and I hope you enjoy this conversation. Hi, Mike, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on, Richard. I really appreciate it. Well, this is going to be a, a cultural voyage for me, right? Because you're the chief executive of uh, what I'm going to describe as a very American business, but it sounds like it's really essential and needed. Um, so I'm just going to say, jump straight in and just explain, because I think it's extraordinary what, you're, what, what Zero Eyes is all about. Um, what is it in a nutshell? Yeah. Uh, so zero wise, we're, we're a video analytics company we use computer vision models over existing security cameras to detect guns. So then when a gun's detected, we can send alerts to first responders, local staff and security. So they have more actionable Intel to stop mass shootings and active shooters, save time, save lives. Right. So you're on a mission to stop mass shootings, right? That it's a life and death yes. business. <laughs> yes, uh, absolutely. And so obviously I was saying it's a very American business because we know that obviously in America, particularly of all countries, there is a issue with gun violence. Um, what's, what's your backstory? So how did you get into, you know, this incredible idea of video analytics to prevent shooting, mass shooting incidents? I mean, that's, you know, interesting journey to get there. So take yeah, it back a bit. How did it all start? So, so we're based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, I grew up here in Philadelphia, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewind the clock a little bit here. In back when 9-11 happened, I was in college. Um, and, and shortly after that, I, I dropped out of college and went and listened in the Navy to become a SEAL. It's where I met the majority of our co-founding team. Did that for over 10 years. And then it was, it was time for a career change because uh, I went to spend more time with my kids and I was away a lot when I was in the military. So I, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. So I figured business school would help me figure that out. So I applied to business schools. And I was fortunate enough to get in the Wharton Business School here in Philadelphia. So it was a nice homecoming. Hmm. Um, and then that was 2013, but then dabbled in a couple of different jobs and then fast forward to 2018. And unfortunately, like you said, in the United States, um, lots of active shooters, mass shootings, um, especially since Columbine. And Columbine happened in 1999. And it's just gotten worse year over year. But back in 2018, Parkland school shooting happened. And my oldest daughter who was in junior high at the time, um, came home from school and her school started doing active shooter lockdown drills. And it, 
that was the first time for her to experience something like that. And she was very upset and she was like, are they going to come in and shoot my school? Like at these other schools. And I was like, this is just not something needs to change. Something needs to change. Now everyone's been saying, you know, never again since Columbine, but every time there's a shooting, they say never again, people just offer thoughts and prayers, but action needs to happen. And me and my co-founders decided to take action. And so we started zero wise in 2018. Um, and it really, I was at my daughter's school for indoor sports practice and there's, I was just waiting for it to finish. And I was sitting there, I was looking around and there was a camera. It was like every 15, 20 feet in the school. I asked the security guard who was looking at them and he just laughed. He was like, no one's looking at them. We just don't, we only use them after something happens. And so I was like, wait, if we could use those cameras to detect guns and provide better information, I was like, we can help save lives. And hmm. here we are. Yeah, I think it's so interesting, right? It's just that one comment almost from your daughter that it used to go, you know what, like, something has to happen. And then uh, it's so creative to say, well, let's get technology on the case. What was the link, right? So how did you, so you're already involved in visual, artificial intelligence, visual recognition, those kind of things? Or was that something you felt you had to go and research and learn about? How did you make the link from yeah. one to the other? <clears throat> It was a little bit of both, you know, I dabbled in some tech startups. So uh, one of my co-founders is very heavy in attack. He actually worked for him before when I was in business school, uh, he had a previous startup. Um, and when I was at Comcast, I worked around a lot of engineers, but also knew some folks that were doing facial recognition technology and other computer vision stuff. So I was just learning more about it. I mean, computer vision is still in its, fr from a, a scaled business perspective is still in its infancy. Um, and I just kind of, uh, I realized that people can do facial recognition technology, but I was like over security cameras, why can't we d detect a gun? And mm -hmm. you don't have to deal with all the political baggage of privacy concerns and everything else. Like we're detecting an object. Everyone wants to know if someone's walking around with a gun where they shouldn't be. Um, and yeah. And so we just started chipping away at it. It was, mm -hmm. a, it was, I mean, it's still an uphill. I feel like every day I'm climbing a mountain knee deep in mud and uh there's no peak to it but it's but it's okay they're climbing a mountain knee deep in mud yeah often that's like that it's a great definition of of businesses right um you people don't see that often they see the peaks you know when you have your big success but they don't see all the all the muddy um yeah. marshes in it takes, like, it takes like seven years for an overnight success or something yeah, something like that at least uh, probably <laughs> it's probably taking you your whole life um in in many ways and, and yes. so, yeah, and, and so who do you actually sell this equipment to or this service? Uh, you know, who, is it for schools? Is it for governments, uh, enterprises? Who are you focusing on? Yeah, so we start this, I mean, we formed the company specifically for schools and that's where we started. Our first, after we got our MVP off the ground, we went into a school, they were a beta customer and they're still a customer today. Um, excuse me, I burp in there. The, um, so we started off in schools and what was interesting when COVID hit schools went into basically a holding pattern. No one was going into schools anymore. Um, but we, we started getting, we started getting a name for ourselves and it was getting out there and people were hearing about us. And so when COVID hit in the United States, it was like kind of a, this unfortunate, perfect storm of gun sales went through the roof. There was defund the police. There was, and so gun violence across the United States has been increasing. Um, and commercial companies started reaching out to us to go in places like shopping malls, corporate campuses, et cetera. Um, and then we start, then we started getting into military bases. And so now we have, you know, we have dedicated sales teams across multiple verticals from education. We have commercial that's broken out into sub verticals and then we have our government team. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. So I know you've, you've, in my view, in my view, you built out this business pretty fast, right? I mean, you had COVID to deal with, which required a pivot in your business model. And yet in, you know, perhaps four, four years or so, you've, you know, you've scaled the business up to 120 people, I think you said. Um, so how, what's it been like, you know, growing and creating the business? Because again, it's not like it's a, it's two things, right? It's a new market. It's an innovative technology. It's selling to quite complex organizations like public sector, schools, military, whatever, right? With long sales cycles, you know, and you have this organizational chaos of bringing in lots of new people and creating a culture in the midst of all that. So it sounds like a bit of a perfect storm. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Well, what, what's, what's been your learning, I suppose, from that process? Like, you know, what, what, uh, what have you learned along the way? What advice would you have? Yeah. Um, well, first I've, I've been very fortunate to surround myself with very smart, capable people. I love going into the room at work and realizing I'm the dumbest person in the room. So that's, it helps when you put the right people in the right seats and my, my co-founders, our founding team and, and our, our, you know, our first employees that are still with us, they're just phenomenal, A plus players all around. And they know how to not only lead, but they know how to follow and they know how to create a team and communicate. So we have a very flat organizational structure at zero wise. Um, but we really focus, I mean, to, to scale, especially with those people, it, it, everyone likes to hear a growth story and everything, but with growth comes your more problems grow and kind of get to, you want to avoid playing whack-a-mole, but it, it happens sometimes. But if you keep uh, from a, a top down from leadership of setting goals, making sure those goals are visible to everyone, tracking towards those goals and showing them where we are. And if we go past them, awesome. Why did we go past them? If we didn't hit the mark, okay, why didn't we hit the mark? And just being really honest with ourselves mm. um, has, has really helped. And I, one of the things that we, the mantras we had when we were in the SEAL teams was, you got to, you got to master the basics. And, and part of that was being able to three things, shoot, move, and communicate. Um, and you can apply that in the business sense too. And you're not shooting, but think about that as like execution hmm. and you have to be able to move. Like if something's not working right or something is, but being able to move and flex and, and get to a different position very quickly. Yeah. Uh, and then communication. I mean, the wheels will fall off the bus if teams are not communicating and you, you want to stay away from teams getting siloed and it happens sometimes hmm. and you, you recognize it and you go and, and change it. Yeah, I love the, that metaphor. Um, I was going to ask you actually on that very question: How has being a SEAL, uh, having that military background? I know you're, some of your other founders, I believe, had the same background. So how how has that influenced the business, the the way of looking at things? Uh, what do perhaps other people come in when they when they join the company and say, "Oh, this has got a certain feel." You know, what, what would you say would has has carried over apart from that? Obviously, nice point around that yeah, and can communicate. So from, from a, a veteran military standpoint, I mean, there's a couple of things to unpack there, but one, um, in the military, particularly in the U S military, you get into special operations, Navy SEAL teams, whatever, it doesn't even matter, but like you, you really good at forming teams around a mission and, and just executing on that mission. And even when times get tough, developing, um, uh, I don't know if you develop it or if you're born with it already, but you definitely uh, strengthen it is that perseverance and grit to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Even if you're getting knocked down every day, getting back up and staying in it, because eventually you're going to have that breakthrough or you're going to have that 1% improvement. And then the next day, a 1% improvement. Um, and we put a heavy emphasis at zero eyes on hiring veterans hmm. uh, for a couple of different reasons. One, it, it's, it's, um, it's part of our culture. I mean, we, we, most of our founders are vets that we have out of the 120 some people in our company, roughly 70 of them are veterans, U.S. veterans. And we like hiring veterans, one, because we know what they've been through and what kind of training they have. And when veterans leave the service too and transition, they, they, they need to have another mission. Hmm. Um, and so we help provide that mission. And I, a lot of people get behind trying to stop uh, senseless active shooters, mass shooting events in the hmm. United States. So... It's, um, yeah, it's interesting. It sounds like you might be actually piggybacking on an existing pre-built culture to the benefit of the business. Because when that's people... a good way of putting it. Hundred percent, I agree. A hundred percent with that. It's it's definitely piggybacking on on a, the camaraderie and teamwork and uh, mission oriented approach that uh, we had in the military. And yeah, we we have that in zero wise. It's Richard here with just a quick interlude. If you're serious about multiplying your impact, I have a free resource that you won't want to miss. I've put together a short email course called Exponential Leadership Principles. In it, I set out how you can use the same strategies as some of the world's top leaders to get out of incremental progress and achieve breakthrough results. Be prepared to have your current thinking challenged and to learn some very new, ways of leading. 
If you're interested in following along, simply sign up at xquadrant.com slash go slash exponential. And now back to the conversation. Yeah, it's interesting because, yeah, you've almost pre-qualified people against certain criteria because of that background. Uh, and there's a shared experience that people can tie into. So I think that's really interesting. Um, how would you describe the personal mission that you're on, you know, as a leader? Um, because obviously there's what you're up to in the world, you know, in, 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 the, in, the, in the market, you know, in your team. You know, how do you kind of think about that? What's, yeah, what, what's, how would you boil down your mission in that way? Yeah, we are. it's really nice to come out of the military and find a place where you have that mission that we talked about. And uh, our mission is to, my mission and the mission of Zero Wise, at the end of the day, it could boil down to wanting to save lives. It would be, you know, a lot of us in the company uh, were off to war and, and saving lives wasn't really the mission, you know, mm -hmm. that, that happens right. during missions, but it's a, it's, it's war. Um, mm -hmm. It's yeah. nice personally to have a mission that's leaning towards something more positive of saving lives. But at the same time, it bothers you because that's just the state of what is going on in America right now. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like this weird yin and yang pulling on you, right? Like you want to go out there and save lives and do something to make a difference. But it's so frustrating that this even has to exist. Yeah, I would love for one day that yeah, active shooters, mass shootings has never happened ever again. And all right, we don't have a business. I would be completely happy with that. I'll find another mission. Mm. Um, but right now, that's our... Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because your mission is actually to put yourself out of business in one in one sense. I mean... Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's that if we can all sit around, I mean, and everyone on our team can sit around a table one day and look at each other and say, all right, mission success. There's no more active shooters, mass shootings. That would be a fucking wonderful day. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see that happening anytime in the near future no. in the United States. No. So what, um, so right now in the business, uh, which is obviously a, a business that's, that's growing and say it's got to make its mark in the, in, in the market, it's, it communicate the, what the technology is about and figure out all those things, right? I'm sure as you scale in these different verticals, what, what energizes you and excites you the most in the business and what drains you and slows you down the most? <laughs> ah, what energizes me? You know, the whole, when you're growing and things are going well and everything's moving in the right direction, that's exciting just in and itself. It's great to wake up to that. But with that, you know, comes more problems. Um, but it's just that energy. Like we're, we're, we're growing fast. We're getting more cameras on the platform and, and, you know, going back to the mission of saving lives, it's, it boils down to like the more cameras we're on, the more opportunities we're, we're going to have to make, make a difference and make an impact. And that just really excites me seeing our operations team and our monitoring team and everything, just getting on more cameras and doing the job day in and day out and coming to the fight. Um, what drains me? Egos, people bullshit. It's, uh, it's, it happens everywhere in life, not just in business, um, but that could get, you know, I think we do a really good job of hiring and finding great fits in the company. But still, you're going to have people problems and people's egos are going to get in the way. And, and uh, that's that's tough. That could be draining. But uh, I think we do a good job of handling it. Yeah. Yeah, for, sh yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's uh, people issues, always the sticky ones so often. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, can yeah. we just get back to the, being focused on the mission and moving forward and and egos yeah. get in the way yeah. at the end of the day it's what it boils down to everyone knows what the goals are and where we have to get to and what needs to be done but it's yeah well, that's why it's great having veterans little not all veterans but you know i'd say a large percentage of them uh know how to minimize their ego and, and think about the, the broader mission and team yeah i was going to ask what what your tip was around that it, it might be what you just said um, you yeah. know, how you actually help people to how you get past those ego, ego, ego problems. Um, yeah. I, I, I would generally say focus on, yeah, what's the bigger picture here, but is, is, there, is that what you would do or do you have other? Oh, that's what we do all the time. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're going to have another all hands here soon. And, and we always go back over our mission, our vision, our, our core values are, and, mm -hmm. you know, three year plan, 10 year plan. And, and, um, and then we just talk about what we need to do in the next six months to make those other things a reality. What's that next 
yeah. that next bite of the elephant, the next foot in front of the other. Yeah, I often see with leaders, it can be really easy to focus in on what's going on right now, this week, this month. And leaders can quite easily lose their sense of vision. And, oh, it, and even, it, they might still have it actually, but they forget to communicate it mm. because they're in the day to day. And suddenly they're wondering why their team is disengaging and pulling back. It's because they're not inspired, right? They don't know why they're doing what they're doing anymore. And we forget yeah. that so quickly. It's tough. I mean, you're in a, especially in like a, 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 a hyper growth company or not even in a hyper growth company, it could happen in any company, but with, you know, when things are growing, you're adding more to your team, but you're in the trenches with your teams, battling it in day in, day out. Like you, you got to realize sometimes, oh, I have to, I have to pull my head out of this and, and, and see what's over the next ridge line. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, going back, I'm just fortunate to have really great people on my team and my founding team and, and, and I wouldn't be able to do it solo. It's a, it's definitely a team, team approach and we get it done. Perfect. Let me move us on to our quick fire questions here. Um, what's the favorite quote? What's the quote that you live by? Cool. Um, I have a few. One, I'm going to steal from my, my co-founder, Rob Huberty, but actually, he, well, he stole it from Ben Franklin, but it was uh, small strokes fell great oaks. That's, you know, just chipping away at it. Another one I like is um, it's not the size of the dog in a fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. Yeah, great ones. What about a book? A book that's been influential to you as a leader? Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Man's Search for Meaning. Mm. Um, that, that, that had a huge impact on my life and, and uh, it actually helped me with when I was, I read it before I went into SEAL training and I picked it, I picked, I've always gone back to it. It's just, it's an amazing book. Yeah, that's a, uh, it's a classic, right? And it's, it's hard hitting. Yes. What advice would you give your 20 year old self? <laughs> Stay out of trouble. Um, Stay on path and keep putting one foot in front of the other. It'll be all right. Okay. Um, next one is many of our best guests have been on, um, come from, on the show, come from referrals and, and, and recommendations. So I'm always curious when I have people on who inspires you as a leader. So who's an impactful yeah. CEO who, you know, you know, who might be a great guest for a future episode, right? And what do you admire about them? Um, if you could get Bob Iger on there from Disney, that would be phenomenal. But uh, he, he, he's pretty amazing. But one, one um, a peer, fellow veteran, uh, we work in the same space. Our, our companies work together, but he, he's real amazing. His name's Mike Rogers. He was uh, a West Point graduate, uh, Ranger officer, U.S. Army Ranger officer. And he started a company called CRG, um, and they're working in the public safety space. And uh, he's been growing like bananas. Uh, his, his company's doing phenomenal. He's just, him and his very similar team and culture at his company. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's just a great person. Yeah. What inspires you about him? What do you admire? Uh, he just gets it done. You know, he just does what he says he's going to do. Uh, mm -hmm. He's he's no bullshit, no frills. He, he just gets right to it. And I, I mm -hmm. love it when people are like that. And he, he's the he's the walking epitome of that. Nice, nice. So my favorite question is always looking forward because no matter how much we've achieved, there's always next level to get to. So where does Zero Eyes go from here as a business? We're going to stay, well, we got to stay focused and stay on path to where we are right now. But at the end of the day, our mission is to save time and save lives. We're going to do it through, for right now, we're doing that through uh, gun detection, through computer vision on security cameras. But the more cameras we're on, the better opportunity we have. So we just want to, we want to get on every security camera in the United States. Like think of uh, fire code, building code, like more people in the United States, 15 times more people die from gun violence in the United States than they do fires. But every building you walk into in the United mm -hmm. States has smoke detectors, fire suppression systems. Mm -hmm. It's only a matter of time where it's, you're going to see building code around this type of technology and we're going to lead the way for it. That's, that's brilliant. I love it. I love that scale of vision. That's the kind of thing which changes the world. And so I want to honor you for, for going, going there, going for it, going, thinking big. What do you, what will you need to do, Mike, personally to multiply your own impact, right? Because we all have a little success formula that gets us so far and then we find it hard. How are you going to break through? What's, what's going to be your challenge? Yeah, the whole force multiplier thing, that was, that was a bit, when I was in, when I was in the military, particularly when I was in, overseas. I, I worked with uh, 
the Navy dropped me in to work with another country special operations group. So I was kind of flying solo for a little bit. I had a partner with me, a fellow SEAL, but they called us force multipliers mm -hmm. on a battlefield. So we would work with other special forces from other countries and we would help provide them with intelligence if they needed assets such as helicopters or something. And so we'd be like, hey, these are the, the targets and the mission sets you guys should be going after for. And we would help enable them to make it happen. So now the U.S., they only have one U.S. soldier, maybe two U.S. soldiers on the battlefield. Uh, and they're not putting 50 U.S. soldiers mm -hmm. on the battlefield. Now. So it's a force multiplier. The way I apply that in business is thinking about like, you know, I had uh, my executive team enable them to be the leaders that they need to be, give them the tools that they need so they can turn around and create their leaders within their teams. Mm -hmm. And then they can build out from those teams. And it, it, it has that keep a flat organization where you enable leaders. And then uh, a good leader makes good leaders. That's, that's what needs to happen. And that's how you force multiply. Yeah, I love it. Well, that's the podcast, right? Impact Multiplier. Uh, the X in X quadrant has a couple of meanings, but one of it is the multiplier effect. Because um, as you say, there's one thing to be a great leader. There's another thing to create a team of great leaders. And there's another thing to create that multiplying effect where you build leaders throughout the organization. And that, I think, is the end game for any organization that wants to scale and, and have an impact. Yeah. So this is Absolutely. great, Mike. Uh, it's been a great conversation. Uh, I've loved, you know, A, the story, the sense of mission, the heart that comes through what you're up to. They're very practical. Um, you know, getting in the trenches to solve a, a, an important issue. Uh, if people want to find out more about, about the business or, or get in contact with you, you know, how do they do that? Yeah, they could just go to uh, zeroeyes.com and it's Z E R O E Y E S. Yep, zero eyes. Com. Perfect. So I'll, we'll put all those in the show notes. Um, and, well, Mike, it's just been a pleasure. It's been so interesting to talk with you uh, and hear all about the business. And I'm looking forward to watching as you get on every security camera in the USA. Thank you for having me on, Richard. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Now let's talk about you. When you're in top leadership, when you're in the biggest role of your career, who supports you at a deep level as you lead others? Who helps you multiply your impact and get to the next level? If you're ready to learn more about our content, our coaching and our community, then visit us at xquadrant.com.